signal from the depths of the sea. The voice of a piece of hardware lost on the bottom and continuously transmitting its acoustical mayday to a world 1,748 feet above. The hardware is a prototype torpedo undergoing development for the United States Navy. When experimental ordnance remains unaccountably on the bottom after a test, it must be retrieved since the recorded data stored within is essential to determining why the test was successful or unsuccessful. Also, it can serve again as a test vehicle. Had the experimental torpedo surfaced following its test run as it should have, it would have been picked up by a surface recovery vessel such as this. When the torpedo sinks to the bottom, these boats are used to help determine its position. The acoustic signal constantly being transmitted from the lost torpedo is detected by the directional underwater listening device aboard the surface recovery boat. And coordinates of the torpedo's approximate position are sent to communications control center. Uh, Roger, we'll read you the same. Night skater 30 reports, signal 28, area November. Coordinates as follows. 33 degrees, 29 minutes north, 118 degrees, 07 minutes west, over. Nice skater one, it's nice skater two seven. Roger, out. Come to course zero four five. Zero four five. Nice skater two seven is the radio code for this especially equipped Navy Yard tug, which has been standing by in close proximity to the test area. It is the support vessel for a unique and versatile unmanned cable controlled underwater research and recovery vehicle called CURVE. CURVE was developed by the Naval Undersea Warfare Center and its primary function is search and recovery for deep submergence operations to 2,000 feet. A secondary function is to provide an economical, flexible and durable means for prolonged undersea research. A surface recovery craft has dropped a marker to indicate the approximate location of the torpedo. Surface recovery boats also aid the larger vessel in maintaining the best position above the undersea target throughout the deep recovery operation. To ascertain the torpedo's position on the bottom relative to the marker buoy on the surface, the support vessel takes a directional bearing. This precludes entanglement of curves control cable or of the vehicle itself in the line holding the marker buoy. A complete checkout of curve specialized components is made immediately prior to launching. Hey Larry, you ready for your deck check? Let's check it out here. Hello, deck. Hello. We're going to do our deck check, vertical motor first. Roger. Vertical motor down. Vertical motor down. The propulsion units are powered by 440 volt, 60 cycle, 10 horsepower motors, motor which ahead. are controlled by three phase variacs. The marine type motors have been encased in oil filled pressure compensated housings to provide a silt free environment. Starboard motor astern. All right, TV left. TV left. TV right. TV right. The hydraulic system that operates the tilt of the sonar, the pan and tilt of the TV and photographic equipment, and Curve's versatile claw is a pressure compensated system that provides a 750 psi working pressure at all depths. Claw open and close. Claw open, claw closed. Curve's claw can be replaced by a grapnel device, a snare, or a clamshell. Control of curve is accomplished from the console. That looks pretty good. Give me some power, we'll tilt the sonar. Curve's operators can listen with curve sonar ears and see with curve's television eyes. Sonar up.
curve's operators remain safe on the surface of the sea, while curve is sent into the depths where it can be maneuvered and made to perform intricate and difficult tasks that are often beyond the capability and endurance of a man submersible. Small buoys are attached to the first 600 feet of the instrumentation and control cable to make it neutrally buoyant. The umbilical link between Curve and its crew is a 47 conductor non-hosing cable through which all power, control signals, sonar information, and video signals are transmitted. Curve's propulsion system not only powers the vehicle directionally, but also keeps it down. The combined action of the 10 to 15 pounds of positive buoyancy and the action of the vertical screw create an updraft in the water when hovering close to the bottom, thus minimizing water disturbances that would interfere with camera and television coverage. Each of the three motors can develop a forward thrust of 400 pounds and a reverse thrust of 200 pounds. The speed with which curve descends in the water is determined by the time it takes the crew to handle the cable. It has been found that the average time for a 1,400 foot descent is 20 minutes. 1,700 feet below them, a swimming robot does their bidding. Linked to its operators in the world above, Curve carries out the work for which it was designed. A path blazed by sound leads across the ocean floor. The target is a cooperative one, meaning that it is transmitting an acoustic signal, which, like a call for help, can lead even a blinded curve to the scene. But curve is not blind. Its constant transmission, frequency modulated sonar, receives 9 and 45 KC signals to provide target bearing information. Monitoring a 9 KC signal on the sonar scope, okay, the curves operators determine the bearing of the strongest signal. All right, there's the bottom. We're on the bottom now. Should a torpedo be silent for any reason, active sonar is used to search a sunless world with a barrage of bouncing echoes. However, using active sonar to find a silent torpedo can be particularly difficult in an area as cluttered with lost and unwanted objects as is the channel between Long Beach and Catalina Island. Experience has shown that active sonar points out objects other than ordnance items. Topside, they are running out of daylight. In the depths, it is always night. As curve moves across the seafloor at approximately one half knot, Curve sonar, sweeping in a 120 degree sector, sees the complete terrain. There's the bird. That's it. Les, would you record the time? The lost torpedo is located by sonar and classified by TV. This looks like a good approach, Les. I want to pan the TV just a little right so I can see the claw. Okay. Okay, now open your claw. Open. In order to attach the claw, curve must be at an approximate right angle to the hardware. Therefore, a curve is maneuvered to make a broadside approach while still some distance away, so that visibility near the target will not be hampered by circulating silt and mud. Looks like a good approach here. All right, TV, just a little more right and a little down. Good. Good, you've got the claw on it. Now close. 
curve has extended man's hand deep into the sea, provided it with intelligent direction and Herculean strength. I'm going to try and just ease up a little bit. Keep closing on your claw. That looks good. That looks real good. Bob, it looks like we've got a good hold. That looks like a real good attachment. Let's bring it up. All right. Coming up now. Curve is able to recover hardware weighing about 200 pounds in water using only the power of its propulsion units. Loads to 500 pounds have been brought to the surface from relatively shallow depths by manually hauling in the cable. Ejection of the claw and a marker buoy enables surface recovery of heavier loads. Another recovery accomplished. Another piece of valuable hardware salvaged from the depths. How valuable? Aside from the vital data contained within, experimental torpedoes often run as much as $75,000 each. In the course of picking them off the bottom, Curve more than amortizes the cost of its continued development, upkeep, and operation. Curve's work is not limited to the recovery of torpedoes. In March 1966, Curve was flown to Palomar, Spain to help recover an item lost in the sea and valued somewhat in excess of $75,000. Since January 17th, following a mid-air collision between an H-bomb laden B-52 and a jet tanker, La Bamba had been resisting all efforts for its recovery from the ocean depths. Found at a depth of 2,500 feet by the tiny man submersible Alvin and lost during a recovery attempt, the bomb had been relocated by Alvin 2,850 feet from the surface, almost 1,000 feet deeper than Curve's operational depth, a maximum 2,000 feet. Curve joined the recovery team and with a specially designed grapnel to replace its claw, descended into the murky depths. Stills photographed from Curve show the bomb's parachute and the grapnel as it was inserted into the apex or spill portion of the parachute. Twice, Curve descended to the sea floor and entangled a grapnel in the shroud lines. Then Curve itself became entangled in the parachute and was raised with the bomb photographed here when approximately 100 feet from the surface. Freed from time limiting and other hazardous factors inherent in the manned submersible, Curve proved beyond any doubt that the remote controlled submersible system has a place in man's future within the sea. Not as a device in competition with other devices, but as a useful member of a team in mutual support of one another. Man has been described as standing on his earth and reaching for the stars. With Curve, he may now also reach into the sea. <laughs>